Talking about finance, it's Sunday, April 4th. My name is Dave Coker. Seven slides for seven days. First of all, debt's on everyone's mind now because of Mr. Biden's plans to borrow and spend. And the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis has a very interesting graph that I came across where they're looking at total debt to GDP. So they're including federal debt, household debt, and a lot of people just look at federal debt, but they're including household debt and non-financial corporate debt. Now, non-financial corporate debt is defined as debt that's issued by, not by banks. So in other words, we're taking a look, and this is from the Dallas Fed actually, we're taking a look at borrowing by private businesses that are not banks, because banks typically are, are very heavily leveraged. And it's really getting up there, guys. It's at record levels. My God, we're approaching 300%. So America clearly is living beyond their means. They, uh, If you had a friend who had borrowed so much money, you'd have a, a, a nice conversation with them, try and straighten them out. We're addicted to borrowing. We're addicted to spending. We're living above our means. And I don't think it's going to end well. I'm not, I, I wouldn't forecast a catastrophe, but something's got to give at some point. It's curious when you look about where the money's coming from. We've had this since uh, 1990, this chart, shows us the 30-year U.S. Treasury, the interest rate. And you can see, if you go back to 1990, 30-year bonds were paying about 9%. It was amazing. You could put your money into fixed income, a nice portfolio of uh, long-term bonds and maybe shorter-term uh, notes, and maybe some T-bills, and still collect a, a fairly decent income coupon stream. Now it's impossible. The long bond is yielding about 2.35 and closed in New York last week. So there's some issues here. And as we continue to borrow, keep in mind when we have to refinance, we have to refinance at higher interest rates as interest rates go up. So debt service right now is about 8% of GDP. It's forecast to exceed 10% by 2030. And this is all contingent upon America just not borrowing that much money anymore. Um, it's not going to happen. We're going to continue to do it. So regardless, where are you, what are you going to do with your money? Well, if you go to do uh, business with someone who runs Managed Futures, a commodity trading analyst or trading advisor, they're called, the C and the CTAs run uh, portfolios for institutional investors. And they're not going anywhere near bonds. You can see their allocation is really, really low at that point. So they're moving clients into equities uh, and other assets because you, the returns just are not there in fixed income. So what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do with your money? Where are you gonna invest it? Let's take a look at what happened in the 70s and try and get an idea of how assets performed. Of course, gold was the big winner there over that horizon. And at the other extreme, you've got the S&P 500, small caps versus large caps. Um, three month T-bills, things like that. So you can see interest rates definitely spiked up and that cratered the stock market. Gold performed well, commodities in general performed well. Those days might come back, we, we can't really tell, but you gotta be fleet of foot and keep your head about you in this market. So many people seem to think that the soothing words from the Fed are just, just that, soothing words. And we don't believe, I personally don't, believe that inflation is going to continue to stay low. And look what's going on here. This is very curious. I've got the XLRE real estate fund comparing it to SPX, S&P 500. And we're starting to see property outperforming. So a lot of people putting money into property. I'm doing the same thing, guys. I'm taking profits periodically from the stock market, at least dividends that I get paid and I move them into European property and rent it out. Because I've got no confidence uh, in the long-term sustainability of the stock market. And interesting though, there are some shares that are actually doing really, really well. This is off Bloomberg, and it's entitled Goodbye Virus, Hello Roaring Twenties. <laughs> and it's entirely possible. Now what they're doing is they're taking a look at the uh, Citibank's global stay-at-home basket of stocks that they've defined at the start of the pandemic. And they're comparing it to MSCI's World Hotels, Restaurants, and Leisure Index. Uh, people want to do stuff now. They're starting to spend. They're starting to travel, starting to do things in restaurants. And uh, yeah, so that is really tending to perform pretty well compared to the S&P 500. Will it continue? 
I kind of think it will for an intermediate term. We're not going to be seeing it for, for decades, this outperformance, but definitely over the next 12 to 18 months, maybe two years, without a doubt, we'll see it. And regardless, guys, if you can't make your mind up about stocks and you're fearful of fixed income, that's okay. Because we'll always have Bitcoin. You can always put some cash into Bitcoin. And I tend to pay attention when organizations like Goldman speak, and I tend to remember. And it was really interesting looking at, looking at their view going back oh, about four years ago, three years ago, on Bitcoin. When it was trading at roughly $6,000, they said they were going to be worth zero. And look what happened at 60000 Goldman totally flip-flopped, <laughs> right? And uh, now they're actually offering or planning to offer Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, digital assets here, uh, to private banking customers. They're no doubt doing that because many other banks are now offering their private customers, private wealth customers, cryptocurrencies and other digital assets. And at the end of the day, we really have to pay attention to what's going on in China. And I've consistently said, we don't give the Chinese enough respect for how they handled the pandemic. And they went into lockdowns and all the, all the Western democracies were tucked, uh, clucking and saying, oh, that's what you can do if it's an authoritative nation or a communist nation, whatever. It was just total garbage. And yet, we're all emulating them now, and the UK was still in lockdown. We just got there late compared to the Chinese, who did it early and did it very aggressively, handled it quite well. And this is showing up now with their economic recovery. So they're actually recovering faster, uh, really, than the US or pretty much any Western democracy that's out there. It's a really fascinating time. So again, pay attention to China. You don't really see this uh, too much in the, in the Western press. It's in the financial press sporadically these presentations, but in general, they don't talk about it too much because um, there's a conflict now between the U.S. and China, and it's all driven by America's relative decline compared to China. All right, guys, that's it for today. Thank you very much for your time. Go forth and make money. Take care.